friends, I'm Lulu, and welcome to Judson Sunday Arts, where kids of all ages can make art that matters. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and for those of you joining us with low vision, I'm a white 34-year-old woman with very short, buzz-cut, dark blonde hair. I'm wearing a white button-down shirt with a collar, and there's a big bookcase behind me with books and other things on it and art on the walls. Today, we're going to draw before and after pictures of what the world will look like after we leave our legacy. You will need something to draw on and something to draw with. You can use art supplies like markers, pencils, crayons, or paint and paper, or you can make these digitally. If you tuned into Andy's lesson on March 28th, you'll remember a lesson about record-setting basketball player turned criminal justice advocate, Maya Moore, and the tennis champion sisters, Venus and Serena Williams, all of whom are incredible black female athletes who strive to leave legacies that are larger than themselves, and they're doing it. When we talk about leaving a legacy, we mean a gift by will, especially of money or other personal property. So something that someone would leave um, to family members or loved ones after they've died, or something transmitted or received from an ancestor or predecessor or from the past. But what we also mean is what we can do during our lifetimes that makes the world better. Today, we're going to watch a performance piece by Awele Makeba about a teenager named Claudette Colvin, who was arrested in 1955 for refusing to give up her seat to a white passenger on a segregated bus. Makiba is giving this presentation on a stage in front of a large TED Talk audience. She is a black woman with short natural hair. She's wearing a red v-neck t-shirt under a mustard yellow sweatshirt and a scarf of the same yellow color. She has a beige microphone attached to her cheek. Let's see it. I am Awele, daughter of Alice, granddaughter of Ruth, great-granddaughter of Big Mama Alice and my dear Corrine, great-great-granddaughter of Anna and Zidi Binion. It is my hope to find my best possible self in the service of others. Now, my daddy, he used to tell me stories. My daddy, he would say, I want you to know who you are and where you come from. That will guide you as you discover who you must be. Now, you listen to this story, you hear me, baby girl? It's not gonna be in a book. Your teacher's not gonna tell it, but you need to understand who you are. That became a guiding principle in the stories that I wanted to tell. Stories about legacy of who we are. I used to hear all the time, the children are the future. But what does that cliche really mean and how are we preparing them? So I looked for narratives about young people and the legacy that they bring as agents of change, the power that you have right now. Today, March 2nd, 1955, the story that I want to share with you comes from 1955, March 2nd. It's about a courageous 16-year-old girl, Claudette Colvin. And it comes full circle today because a week ago today in San Francisco, my middle school students, they performed a program that I had written, Agents of Change, starting with the reenactment of Plessy versus Ferguson from 1892 to 1896 moving to Brown versus Board and a student-led strike by Barbara Rose Johns, jumping to Claudette Colvin in the Montgomery bus boycott, and ending in 1960 with the sit-in movement, the nonviolent movement led by students. So I'm going to share this story, and I would like to also share the work that I do with it as a case study. I paid my dime at the front of the bus, and then I ran to the back door with the rest of the colored kids so the driver wouldn't take off before we got on. Also, well, whites don't want us walking down the aisle next to them. 
When I got back on the bus, colored section was full, so I sat in the middle section. I took the last row, seat on the left, it was right by the window. Wasn't thinking about anything in particular. Hey, I didn't know the girl next to me either, this older girl. So I just looked out the window. Driver went more stops, more people were getting on, colored and white. Pretty soon, no more seats were available. Give me those seats, the driver called out. Color folks just started getting up. White folks started taking their seats, but I stayed seated. Girl next to me and the other two across, they stayed seated. I knew it wasn't the restricted area. Make light on your feet! Girl next to me got up immediately. She stood in the aisle, then the other two girls. But I told myself, this isn't the restricted area. The driver, he looked up, looked in the window. That mirror, he pulled over. Pregnant lady, Miss Hamilton, got on the bus. She ran to the back and got on, not knowing he was trying to have me relinquish my seat. And she sat right next to me. The two of you need to get up so I can drive on, sir. I paid my dime, I paid my fare. It's my right, you know, my constitution, constitutional. <laughs> Let me get the police. Well, he got off and he flagged down two motormen and they came. And those motormen, they came onto the bus, looked at Mrs. Hamilton. Now the two of you need to get up so the driver can drive on. Sir, I paid my dime. I'm pregnant. If I were to move right now, I'd be very sick, sir. Sir, I paid my dime too, you know, and it's my right, my constitutional right. I'm a citizen of the United States. You just read the 13th and 14th Amendment, it'll tell you so. I know the law. My teacher, she taught it at school. You see, my teacher, she taught the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, Patrick Henry speech, I even memorized it. My teacher, she would prick our minds, trying to see what we're thinking about. She would say, who are you? Hmm? Who are you sitting right here right now? The person that people think they see from your outside. Who are you on the inside? How you think, how you feel, what you believe? Would you be willing to stand up for what you believe in even if someone wants to hold you back because you're different? Do you love your beautiful brown skin, children? Hmm? Are you American? What does it mean to be an American, huh? Homework tonight, write me an essay. What does it mean to be an American? You need to know who you are, children. My teacher, she would teach us history and current events. She said that's how we can understand everything that's going on and, and we could do something about it. Sir, all I know is I hate Jim Crow. I also know if I ain't got nothing worth living for, I ain't got nothing worth dying for, so give me liberty or give me death, ouch! I don't care, take me to jail. They dragged her off the bus. Next thing, Claudette Colvin was in a car seat, back seat of the police car handcuffed <laughs> through the windows. The following year, May 11th, 1956, Claudette Colvin was the star witness in the federal court case Browder versus Gale. Her, an 18-year-old teenager, and two others, women, Mrs. Browder, their case, Browder v. Gale, went up to the Supreme Court. On the hills of Brown versus Board of Education, the 14th Amendment and her powerful testimony that day, the rest is history. Now why is it we don't know this story? The Montgomery bus boycott, we hear Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, they will forever be lifted up. But the role of women that they played in that movement, the role of Claudette as an upstander, it teaches us important lessons that challenge us today. What does it mean to be a participant, a responsible citizen in a democracy, and lessons of courage and of faith? So I find freedom movement history that includes young people so that they can explore these big ideas of identity, your chosen identity, and the imposed identity. What does membership in society mean? Who has it? How do we make amends? race and violence in America, as well as participatory citizenship. So these stories allow me to have conversations, to speak the unspeakable that many are afraid to have. Once in Eugene, Oregon, a young, blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy, middle schooler, 
at the end of the performance and the dialogue said, but Mr. Wele, racism's over, right? And not wanting to answer for him, I said, well, turn to the person sitting next to you, see if you can come up with evidence. And I gave them four minutes to talk. Soon, they began to tell stories, evidence of racism in their community. A girl wrote to me, a high school student in San Francisco. I was going to skip school, but then I heard we had an assembly, so I came. And after listening to the students talk and seeing your performance, I thought I should organize my friends and we should go down to a board meeting and tell them that we want to have advanced classes for A through G requirements. So I tell you this story today in honor of the legacy of young people that have come before so that they will have guideposts and signs to be the change that they want to see in this world, as Claudette Colvin was, because she struck down the constitutionality of segregated seats in Montgomery, Alabama. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. All right. Did you learn anything new from this story? How did Awele use acting to tell Claudette Colvin's story? What did she tell the audience about this story's impact on young people? This story is important because it shows the power of young people to make change. Claudette Colvin took a risk by not following unfair rules but the risk was worth it because the laws changed because of her activism and that of many, many other people whose names we know and don't know. What problem do you see in the world today that you would like to help change? What could be your legacy? That's right, it's art making time. Today, we're making two different pieces of art. The first piece will show what the world looks like with the problem. You can call the drawing, this is what the world looks like now with the problem. For example, if the problem that I see is that families are being torn apart by unfair immigration laws, my first picture might show a family that has been split apart with the family members in different parts of the world. I would show that they are frustrated or sad or stressed and that they miss each other. The second piece is what brings hope and can guide you to help fix the problem. Your second picture will show what the world could look like when the problem has been solved. You can call it. If I can help change the problem as my legacy, this is what the world could look like. And using the immigration example, my second picture would show the family celebrating something together, like a graduation or even a nice family dinner. You could spend five minutes or a whole week making your drawings of the problem you see and what it will look like after you leave your legacy. If you love what you made, send it to me so I can feature it on another edition of Judson Sunday Arts. Be safe, wear your masks, Happy art making and happy Women's History Month, friends. See ya.